we're going to take a look at scientific notation and basically it's designed to write really large numbers in a quick and efficient manner also it's designed to write really small numbers in a very quick and efficient manner um, but we're just going to stick with the large ones today and we'll let lesson 10 talk about the small ones um, there's basically two types of uh, ways that you can write numbers that you're going to be familiar with after this lesson. The first way is standard notation. This is what you're used to seeing. You've used it since uh, kindergarten and first grade, maybe even preschool. Uh, and then here's what scientific notation looks like. There's a number in the front, and it's going to be times 10 to some power. It's always going to be times 10 to some power. So um, the multiplication sign and the 10 will always be there. The front number, the stem number will change. The exponent could change. Um, as you see here, here the stem number changed. The exponent changed, but again, the times 10 is right there. And that's going to be a trademark of scientific notation. Um, if you typed in 5.25 times 10 to the 6th power in your calculator and hit enter, you would have 5,250,000 as your answer. So these two numbers are exactly the same. It's just a quicker, more efficient way of writing it. And as you see, as we start to get up into the larger uh, numbers, like the billions right here, 3 billion and 1 million, um, we could write it a lot quicker, 3.001 times 10 to the ninth. So how do we actually write numbers in scientific notation? If we have it in standard, like we have down here, um, we want to put it in scientific notation, we would do the following. Go through and circle all your non-zero numbers in one gigantic circle. So your first uh, non-zero number is the three and the last one's the four. So just circle all of those numbers in between your first and last non-zero number, okay? The next thing that you would do is you would write out your circled numbers, okay? So I'm gonna write that out, three, zero, zero, four. You're only writing what would be inside your circle. Place the decimal after the first number always. So after my first number, it be right there. See, there's a rule in scientific notation that your stem number, uh, you know, these numbers right here in the front before you get to times 10, it always has to be bigger than 1 or at least 1, but it can't be 10. So when you do the circling and you put your decimal after that first number that you circled, i.e. the 3 right here, that saves you from having to learn that rule, and it makes sure that you're safe every single time. And then it says, then write times 10, and I'm going to put that in black because you're going to see this every single time. The last thing we have to figure out is, what in the world is the exponent? Well, count how many places in the original number you'd have to move the decimal. And what I'm talking about is, because I'm, I'm trying to shorten how much you're having to write down for notes, your original decimal place for the original number was here. And we moved it over three, and then three more to get to its current spot where we put it here in our new um, scientific notation setup. So we had to move it a total of six spaces. Where you're going to use this count number, where you count how many places you'd have to move the decimal for the exponent. And there you go. Three million and four thousand is the same as three point zero zero four times ten to the sixth. Um, let's go through and try this again. Uh, the first thing we do is we circle all your non-zero numbers in one circle and write whatever you circled over here. Put a decimal immediately after your first number and then write times 10. Now count in the original number how many places you'd have to move the decimal place to get to where it is now. So basically right behind the 9, so one time. That'd be 9.5 times 10 to the first power. Circle all of your non-zero numbers. Write whatever's inside that circle. Put your decimal after the first number. Write times 10. Count how many places you'd have to move your decimal. Well, looks like I'd have to move it too. So, to the second power. Again, circle only your non-zero numbers in the circle. So uh, if a zero gets caught in between, we'll look what happens down there. But here we only need one and seven, so write what's in there. And that'd be 1.7, because again, we always put our decimal after the first number. Then write times 10, and count how many places you'd have to move 
the decimal. So it was here. That'd be three spots, and then over two more. That'd be moving it five times, so our exponent would be five. Now, occasionally students panic when they see this. Do I do a circle like this and a circle like that? N no. Um, basically, you have to get all of your non-zero numbers inside the circle. If it happens to trap a few zeros, it's no big deal. It happens all the time. So we would write out our numbers and always put the decimal after the very first number. Go ahead and write your times 10, and again, come back and see how far you'd have to move the decimal. In this case, it'd be 3 times, so our exponent would be 3. The only non-zero number we have here is 5, so that's what we write. And go ahead and write times 10. Um, if you only have one number, there's no need to put the decimal place there because, let's face it, if we wrote two, we knew there could be a decimal and a zero there if we wanted it to be. So we really don't need to do that when we have literally just one number for our stem. Um, next, go ahead and count how many times you'd have to move, how many places you'd have to move the decimal. So three, six, nine, twelve. The last part of our lesson is how do you convert scientific notation back to large numbers? Well, um, here's your scientific notation right here. Here's your two numbers. Let's see what it says. Write out the stem without the decimal. So here's our stem, 2.6. So let's write it out without the decimals. And I just put the decimal in there. So be careful with that. So here's a 2 and a 6. And let's see what happens now. Move the decimal the same number as the exponent. So our exponent was 3. We're going to have to move our decimal three times and add zeros if need be. So since this is a large number, we're going to be going to the right to make it a large number. And because, I mean, let's let's face it, if, if we had it going to the left, suddenly we would be getting this, 0 0.0026. That would be a very small number. And we're only working with large numbers today. So we're going to go to the right three times. We put a zero here and a zero there. And that's what we have here. The decimal was right here, so moving it once past the six, moving it again, add a zero for a placeholder, and one more time add a zero for a placeholder. And there's your number, 2,600. Again, uh, write out your stem number without the decimal and then move the decimal from where it was five spots. In this case, it's a large number, so we're going to go five to the right. One, two, three, four. So put a zero there for your fourth, and five. One more zero. So really, this number represents 300,100.